Each episode of Education with an Edge is meant to create, cultivate, and inspire honest discussion about issues affecting youth. Hosted by author, artist, educator, advocate, and speaker, Jaquel Lane. Hello and welcome. My name is Jaquel Lane and I am your hostess of Education with an Edge, the podcast dedicated to all things youth because we believe that every child matters and you should too. I am so very excited and honored uh, to have actually a repeat guest with us on here today, Dr. Patricia Newman. She is someone that I highly admire and look up to. Dr. Patricia Newman is a clinical child psychologist and the founder and executive director of Respect. She also holds graduate degrees in educational psychology and special education. Dr. Newman is in private practice with Family Enrichment, Inc., and works as a medical consultant for the Nebraska Department of Disability Determinations. She is the recipient of several professional and community awards, including the YWCA Tribute to Women Award for her work in the areas of human service and community advocacy, the Nebraska School Psychologist Association Psychologist of the Year Award, the Cultural Adult Program Award from the United Way of the Midlands, the Leadership Award for Prevention of Domestic Violence Programming from the WYCA, and the Community Service Award from the Jewish Federation of Omaha. Dr. Newman is the playwright of two of Respect's plays. And um, I just have to say, Dr. Newman, our paths crossed because we have uh, very similar passions, and you were such an integral part in my journey of addressing and advocating for anti bullying and suicide awareness and so I just have to say thank you and I pay it forward to you and and pay you tribute today for all that you're doing in our community and for our youth who need you so very much so thank you you. I can tell you that those um, accolades are just a snippet of everything that Dr. Newman does. So um, it's just uh, we're just so very, very honored to have you here with us today. Um, And we want to kind of focus because we're in this era of transition from a year that was very difficult for most people, but especially very difficult for our youth. And we're seeing that in various ways throughout our school systems and talking and the work that I do with teachers and students throughout the state of Nebraska and truly throughout the country. Um, We're just now seeing the ramifications of kind of what COVID played in terms of the isolation and some of the mental health issues that are arising um, and kind of coming, coming to the surface, right? Right? that we we didn't right. know what would happen after a year like that because it was so unprecedented. And so, um, you know, I, I want to talk, uh, Respect does t- so many things, but, um, you know, can you tell us a little bit about what is new at Respect this year? Sure. Um, when I talk with my staff, what we say that we did last year was we built a parallel organization from the ground up, because what we've always done is use live theater and all kinds of theater techniques to um, work with kids, to have conversations, to teach them skills, give them resources um, about the kind of skills they need to have healthy relationships, no matter what their age. Well, with COVID-19 and the pandemic, we were no longer able to go into schools and work interactively with them. So the question, was at a time when they needed that, those conversations, those interactions more than ever to reach out to a friend, to help a friend, to ask for help. Um, Not only friends and themselves, but for family members, how do you get that information? And of course, as we all, I think, have experienced, um, we needed to learn how to do that as a group virtually a large variety of electronic platforms and so forth. And so it entailed learning um, how to um, revamp our plays, adjust dialogue, write new plays, make um, our content consistent with the co- um, what was going on in their lives related to COVID-19 and those kinds of issues, and then be able to um, communicate that to kids across numerous platforms. And then once we could convey that, and of course, we had to do this with our actors not being able to be on the same stage. So that was through all these Zoom tiles. Then how do we, one of the most important things we do is not just share that information with kids, but we have the kids interact 
They, we have them ask us questions. We have them role play, do improv, do theater games. Then how do we interact across distance? And of course, distance learning is something that schools have started to do at least in the last five or six years in Nebraska. And we've been starting that. Well, this helped us get better at that. And we're going to be able to do that so much better now. But we had to learn how to do that. And that's what we've been able to achieve is um, know that what the topics of mental health and relationships and knowing how to ask for help and help each other are so important, particularly in a crisis, right? Um, and be able to get that information out to kids when you can't interact with them personally and use theater in a virtual manner. Um, and it worked quite well and to interact with them quite well. I, we weren't sure at the beginning. We thought, can they sit still? How long can they sit still? So we broke it up. We adjusted time. But you know, the truth is, is it was like with our grandchildren, our children. You would rather be with them personally, right? Yes. I would rather sit with you and have coffee and hug you. But if I can't, it really, I still need to have a connection with you right and that is what kids told us and one little boy said you know it was in one of our eight week groups and he said you know at the end he said I'm gonna miss this because every kid needs this every week to just sit and talk about what they're doing and that's what we learned that they'd rather do it in person just like adults would but they need a place in their life to talk about their big feelings their friendships what's going on how to get help so here we are that's what we've been doing, like everybody else, adapting, adjusting, learning. And then, of course, with not only with COVID-19 and, and those issues, um, <clears throat> we know that stresses, even good stresses and adjustments um, can impact all of us emotionally. And certainly in your field, in my field, we both work in, in mental health, um, the impact of COVID-19 and the impact it has had on families has really increased anxiety and depression and all of these things on on kids. We see that in all the literature and data that we're collecting. So we're certainly seeing that now and having a need to be able to provide even more support services and having to do that. We've put together a whole new segment of online resources, including your book. Thank um, you. <laughs> to make, yeah, we are so thrilled with that. Um, and other Omaha authors who have shared that so that teachers have even more flexibly available resources for teachers and children to have because the impact of something like, even though we're not done with it, um, but getting through COVID-19, the impact it has on kids and families will continue for a while. It's been very traumatic, right? So... I just can't, I have to, I have to even back up and just say thank you so much for not just the work that you are doing now and how you've pivoted in this virtual, virtual world that we're living in that we didn't know we would have to live in, um, to reach, to reach kids and reach out to kids. But for our viewers that maybe didn't watch the previous episode, cause we did an episode on education with an edge. Actually, Dr. Patricia Newman was one of my very first. I'm so very grateful, um, for her support in that. Um, but you've been doing this for years and years and respect is really truly a baby that was born I mean out of a love for um, through all of your educational accolades and, and all of the things but a very personal journey that you had and so can you tell us a little bit about about respect just kind of a recap um, for our viewers that maybe maybe missed the the first episode that you and I did that was dedicated specifically to respect uh, the organization yeah well we're 22 years old and it started as a volunteer project that I was going to do for one night <laughs> and it just kept going, but it's because it's a good thing. And it's really been about, um, you know, I, I actually um, grew up in foster care. Um, I grew up in a home with a mom who really struggled emotionally, a single mom, and didn't know my dad from the time I was about five until I tracked him down in college. And, and she really struggled. She had a lot of mental health problems and raising two little brothers from the time I was in about second grade on my own the best I could lots of problems and um 
growing up just wanting to really truly wanting to just make it better for other kids so they didn't have to go through that and grew up to be a teacher a special education teacher a child psychologist and finding that my volunteer work took me to things like this and being able to do prevention working with prevention so using theater is a great way to get a lot of information to a whole lot of kids at one time and otherwise you know as a child psychologist you you see kids who have already had you know they're already at a place where if they're seeing you they probably experienced some trauma or some problems and just trying to get information so they maybe don't have to get to my doorstep and of course there are still kids in the audiences who are at different levels of needing different kinds of help and that's totally fine but that has been my goal is is to help teachers and counselors like you or have resources that that fit and are flexible to reinforce what you're doing um it gets to them in a different way because theater is fun yes i, I mean it's talking about the things kids care about friendships bullies online um you know challenges um depending on we, we do child abuse we do uh, dating violence bullying we do negative peer pressure with regard to drugs alcohol suicide prevention all of these topics that they're very interested in they read about they're worried about for their friends and so the topics are important to them theater is a different way to get information and but safe they can identify but they don't have to risk and say that's absolutely me and my life and then it's paid with lots of discussion so they don't feel like they're alone and we get them up on stage so that they can share their solutions how they would handle a difficult um challenge or situation they learn there's no magic you know you just keep trying there's lots of different ways to handle a situation and those are really important things because it's it's, it's real life you know you're not alone some things are going to be hard um just keep asking it's okay if you don't make it happen the first time um there are people here in this audience who care about you um let's ask this teacher what they would do this is what happens if you're at this school where you go to for help and that's incredibly helpful to kids that that's what they tell us and we do a lot of uh, program evaluation data and it shows that the kids tell us that even through a short program they feel like they're much more competent at knowing um being able to identify a problem and knowing some different things that they can do when they're in that situation and not just for themselves but for their friends for peers because lots of times kids want to do something and they don't know what to do and and that's that makes a lot of kids feel bad. I mean, that is that can be a problem for their mental health to feel like they are in a negative situation. They feel like they should do something. They don't know what to do. And, and that can cause some depression and anxiety with kids. It's not a good learning environment. I they want to help. They do. They absolutely want to help. And I think the thing, and you and I both share a passion for the arts and theater, but I think the thing that I love the most about Respect is that research shows how beneficial role playing is. And so mm -hmm. I look back to my experience in high school and in middle school and, um, you know, I don't care how good or how supportive an environment you have. Those are, those can be really devastating and rough years um, for kids and theater and the arts uh, music, I believe really saved my life. And I, I think, you know, I, you know, I did not go on to be an award winning an Academy award winning actress or anything, but it did teach me the skills that I needed to articulate myself, to problem solve, to role play. Um, and I think that this program is so beneficial because you're, you're exposing a group of children that might not otherwise be exposed, um, to, for an outlet, to an ability to release to release emotions and to learn from it. And so um, I have always just been so uh, just amazed and in awe at the programs that Respect has to offer. Um, and it's big, it's also big topics for, for young people. I know that you do, do t I mean, all wide varieties of age groups, but a lot of them are elementary, um, are elementary to middle school. And those are big topics, you know, um, for, for young children. And so presenting it in a way of theater that's fun and engaging mm -hmm. allows them to be able to talk about those. And that's so very right. impactful. Right. Um, you know, this, this school year, and we'll, 
I will turn to you because you're the expert. This school year has been really uncertain for so many students, families, and teachers and, um, and community members. You know, I think that a lot of times community members don't know how they can reach out or be of assistance or be of help. And so what, what can, what can we do to help respect? What can we do to facilitate these programs and get them into schools and get them in front of audiences? Um, just tell us a little bit about that. Well, you can certainly um, share our website. Uh, you, you can call and get more information. We have community um, advisory committees that are open and welcome to the public. If you call or send us an email, we're glad to share that information. We truly have fabulous um, uh, donors and foundations that share scholarships um, and uh, grant funding for us to be able to provide um, programming to schools that need it. We're always glad to collaboratively um, work with after school organizations, um, faith based organizations, what, whatever it, mi it might be, as well as, as schools to help with funding. Um, just to share that we're there and don't be afraid to approach us and that we. Um, are available to go in to schools in a way that's not live because a lot of people see it. I mean, we've done like programming for like almost 600,000 kids. And so, but people think like, oh, we can't have you in a gymnasium based program because a lot of schools have, you know, um, you know, that they're not, uh, they, we can't do that right now. But like this morning, we were at a school and we did eight seventh grade classrooms. Wow. virtually so we were live yeah doing a program for middle school kids for eight separate classrooms and it was beautiful i mean like so the actors were live they were all watching us in separate classrooms so they didn't have to get their kids together and then afterwards um they in that school we weren't allowed to see the kids because they didn't want kids on camera but every school is different so we've learned we have to be really flexible and then but the kids were able to put all the questions on this huge screen in chats we were able to they wanted us answer all the questions which we could do and then they wanted us to act out role plays and scenarios so we the actors did that for them so and they and the feedback was phenomenal and so I, that's what's you know, beautiful about technology yeah. is that we would never have, I mean, really, you would never maybe have been able to do that before. I mean, that's a lot of kids mm -hmm. um, on a virtual platform, which is right. the positive. Right. Yeah. And, you know, I, you know, I'm a psychologist. I like one-on-one, -on -one, right? You're yes. a counselor. Yes. <laughs> we, like, we know that's important a lot because we know kids don't get so much of that as they do so much electronics, right? But you know, you, you do the best you can with what you have. And we now have continuing conversations, a whole series of attachments that go electronically because we can't give anybody anything physical, like our handouts and our pencils and our stickers used to be. And so teachers can, some are crafts and some are stories that we read and some are little videos with the actor educators that replace some of the skills that we teach. And so, then the teacher can go we have a respect song and all of these things depending on age are there to reinforce things so we have different ways to you know be part of um you know flexibly merge with um what the schools the teachers the counselors are trying to do so that would be something you know learn about us ask for you know ask i mean um, don't everybody call it once, but I'm glad to try and have tea with people or talk to them, you know, and we do lunch and learns. We love to do lunch and learns and we do a lot of presentations like that to share what, you know, share what we do. We love to talk about what we do. Yes. And we, at a time, especially we have always needed this, but this is such a time that we yeah. need the, the services, um, that respect has to offer, um, so thank you. Will you just provide our audience with your website very real quick, Patricia, please? Yeah, yeah it's www.respect2, the number two, dot all. Wonderful. Thank mm -hmm. you so very much. Yeah. Um, so one of the things as I was browsing through just um, offerings that Respect has and things like that is that 
um, there is a parent teacher training workshop um, on bullying. Can you take a moment mm-hmm. to tell us a little bit about this? Oh yeah, I love those. Um, we have all kinds of workshops and you know, theater is so flexible. That's what I really like about it. And what we do is we talk to the person who is asking for the workshop and they tell us specific situations that they would like to address. And it's all about role play. So we, we can provide content. We, we are always available to do that. But a lot of what it is, is taking specific situations and concerns that they have, and they can either use our catalog and say, oh yeah, this is, we're worried about this, 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 and this. And we go in and we present those. We have the parents engage in role play. And um, our actors come and, for example, maybe it is a situation where a parent is having a hard time sharing with an administrator, for example, about concerns they have for their child and engaging with a particular teacher, maybe. And so maybe we act that out and we stop it and we say, okay, like, what would you do? Like, how, what does that look like? And lots of people come up and they interact and maybe somebody says, well, that won't work because let me tell you what it looks like from an administrator's point. And then someone maybe hops into that role. And then people start to see and feel a little bit about what it's like to be in everybody's shoes. And then people might say something like, well, I think the reason he acts like that is because he feels like this. And so there's all these opportunities to develop empathy and what it feels like to be in someone else's shoes and um, to learn some different ways. And you hear parents staying afterwards say, you know, I might try that too. I never thought about that. Or I didn't know he was always in a rush at the end of the day because he has to pick up his own carpool at the middle school or whatever. So there's just all kinds of problem solving and people just see things a different way, or at least they're encouraged to try different things in a different way. And, and that's what they're like. And, and we have those for all ages of children as well. And we can, you know, the people inviting us can give us their own role plays and we can help them polish those up or we can provide them what we do. And it really is that flexible. So we're really coming in to make it, in a, you know, as individualized as possible. I think that's wonderful. And I think that's such a tool that so many parents, um, could really use right now, especially where they were, you know, virtually assisting their children with learning at home. And there was a lot of stress surrounding that. We know that some parents lost their jobs and there were some very big um, issues that happened. Um, And so I can see uh, where that can be very, very helpful. And I also think another part of this, and I was just at a school, a public school the other day that I was talking to the counselors there and social media has really like the prevalency of social media within our children's lives is that not only an all time high, but it was even higher during COVID and during um, the mm-hmm. time period when we were shut down. And now what's happening is we're seeing the ramifications of that yep. back in yeah. the school systems of that children really, you know, have the ability uh, and as do adults to hide behind a screen. Um, mm-hmm. And, and, and unfortunately, if they are not touched, taught otherwise, um, how to deal with emotions can really spew some really vengeful and um, yeah. really, really devastating things. And so the more education that we have towards parents to know how to fix fix this and, and work with, um, you know, bullying, be it online or in person, the better for all of us. So thank yeah. you for doing that. Um, why do you think, I mean, in your personal opinion, and I have my opinion, but why, why is it so essential to use theater to problem solve, do you think? Well, I think that people learn in different ways. And I think as, as a teacher, um, that people learn by doing a lot of the time and by seeing and by being involved. And I know that even in graduate school, I was writing things out on cards and talking them through to my cats and using my hands. And um, I would do much better if I would see like a video of some things. And I, you know, I, I always thought that when I was teaching in a resource classroom that so many of the the things on my kids um, IEPs were better for all the kids. And sometimes a kid would come in um, with a friend who didn't have an IEP and they'd say, oh, I wish I could do that, you know? So I just think it's not that it's bad to teach 
in what may be for some kids a more efficient way of giving them a list or a book or just talking, but that um, it's good to teach in a multi-sensory kind of way. And like theater allows you to practice and get your whole body and your whole, all of your muscle movement and all that kind of thing, muscle memory involved. And like I, I say to kids all the time, you can practice what you're going to say to that kid that says something to you all the time and you think they're your friend, but they just won't stop calling you a name that they think is funny and you don't. And you're just real uncomfortable in saying that because you don't want to hurt their feelings and you don't want them to quit being your friend. But you know, maybe you could practice in front of the mirror and they laugh and they say that's silly. And I said, no, you know, people, we say that to all, people all the time about going for a job interview. I say almost everything is better if you practice at once. I mean, how many times do you practice shooting basketball hoops or your spelling words? So certainly friendship skills are important to practice. You know, something as important as that to tell a friend that every time they say something about, you know, that you're wearing this old necklace because your grandma gave it to you and your grandma died and but they're laughing at it because it's not fashionable and it hurts your feelings that's just as important as shooting hoops you know and and then they go yeah yeah that's right but sometimes we minimize the need to practice that because we just think maybe maybe we think that communication skills and social skills and those kinds of things just emerge and everybody just has them and feelings just take care of themselves but they don't. And it's like our objectives for every program that we have are all the same. You know, we always want to give not at the same level, right? Because they're different age and developmental levels, but we give kids information. We demonstrate and, you know, show, not just tell. Um, we try to give people the opportunity to interact and feel, and we give resources because I think that's well-rounded teaching. I would agree with that. I couldn't have thought of a better way to summarize the importance of theater. And I also love um, the point that you made about emotional empathy, because we have, we're learning that social emotional intelligence is so very important. And it's not a skill. I mean, it is a skill that needs to be practiced and sometimes acquired dependent upon a lot of different factors, your upbringing, the way that you've been, you know, treated, um, your own, you know, personal beliefs or your family set of personal beliefs. And so mm -hmm. I love the example that you gave about um, the young lady wearing her grandma's necklace. I see so many times in the classroom or in the schools that I'm at where there is a lack of empathy. And I do think that unfortunately, um, you know, that is maybe brought about a little bit because of this culture that's so centered around technology. Um, and so being able to teach those skills and work through it and, and through theater or through means of practicing, you make sec such excellent points um, that just like with anything, in order to get better, um, we must practice. And, and that even equates to human kindness, you know, so um, absolutely. Um, so I was so excited because obviously, um, I know you've done a lot of research. I've done a lot of research. There's a lot of research out there about early childhood development. And so can you tell us a little bit about your preschool and kindergarten programs? You have so many different varieties of these, and I know that our audience will love to hear about them. Oh, they're very fun. They're, <laughs> well, we had one that was very basic about, you know, being safe with COVID, yes. like distance yes. <laughs> and washing your hands. You know, tomorrow is National Wash Your Hands Day. Hey. I didn't even know there was such a thing, but it slipped up my screen. So it, it must be, right? Awesome. <laughs> um, you know, but just all like our cute little puppies that are in our puppy pals, how to make a friend program. We, we did just really basic, you know, yes. public health kind of things. Um, and they're more about pro social skills and being kind, you know, and, and it's an analogy because they're like puppies at a puppy school who are learning and one of them has um, a disability. And so it's about how to, and how, um, what we did, we always do these with a community advisory committee and they tell us, I always say three things is enough. What are three things you really want kids to learn? If you could have any three things, you know, and, um, one was how to make a friend and one was how to stop and think. Yes. And one was like, it's not about you. <laughs> you know, it's about, you know, cause kids think that, sure. right? Absolutely. If, they, if they did this, it's about me. And it's, so, so we trying to, trying to teach 
some of those things. And it's got a cute little rap and a song at the end. And um, yeah, and it has lots of little stories that accompany it. So so we, we teach those kinds of things. But you know, if you think about it, those are things that I say the stop and think routine. I'm still working on that. You know, like, it's like, okay, okay, just take deep breath before you respond. And even if you're going to respond, how are you going to respond? And so it's, it's those kinds of things that, that we build on. Absolutely. I just love there are so many different varieties. And um, please go to Dr. Newman's website, Respect's website, because there's, I love all the titles and, and also the content is just, especially for little for little people, it's it's very, very important and very es- essential for sure. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your middle school and high school programs and what those focus on? Mm-hmm. Um, we have a variety of them, um, one at each level, one middle school and one high school um, program um, are like choices, for example, um, at middle school. Um, our, our menu programs. So if you are a teacher or a counselor, when you call in, we have multiple topics and you select three that fit the needs of your students best and they all go together as one script. So you might choose body image, you might choose depression and suicide, you might choose alcohol. And so you choose the issues that fit your kids and um, negative peer pressure, dating, violence, bullying, whatever. You just choose those. And there's an, another play, the one that I referred to um, this morning that is more standard um, with regard to bullying, but it includes things like um, uh, bullying kids because of special needs um, a whole variety of things uses almost everything we use. People used to say, well, don't you have something on um, cyber bullying and bullying in like uh, social media? And I said, wherever, you know, that almost to us is like a language. Yes. It, it's like everywhere. I think even one of the puppies has a puppy phone uh, <laughs> because, because it's like yeah. just how kids communicate. Little kids carry those around all the time. I've seen a lot of parents be bullied in Target at the line, just like here, okay, you can have the phone just so I can pay for my groceries, right? So even the little teeny ones are carrying those iPhones around. So um, we just incorporate that wherever is appropriate. Um, because to us, that's just a way of communicating that people can use to try to have control or be mean yes, to each other. Absolutely. Um, one of the topics that you, uh, when I was scrolling through um, information on your website and the research that I was doing on respect is that um, there's a strong focus and emphasis on dating violence. And, and mm-hmm. you know, I, uh, I would really have loved something like this to have been offered when I was younger. And I know that a lot of young men and women feel that way. Um, you know, there's been a lot of highlighting on emotional abuse and what that looks like. Um, I can certainly look back over my life and see relationships that were healthy and see relationships that were not healthy. And so, um, and so what is respect doing to, um, foster the education of this and both young women. And I emphasize young men as well, because Mm -hmm. I I sometimes Mm -hmm. think that, you know, um, that, that, that the men get a, young men get neglected in this and that's not Mm -hmm. that that's not the case um young men can be emotionally and physically abused in relationships as well so in terms of dating violence what is respect doing um and what are some of the programs that you're offering right and also in 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 uh same-sex couples yes uh, yes um they they will often if we don't include that if we forget they will call us out on that right because it's um it's a human behavior human behavior right yes Right. And, and it often um, they'll ask, kids will ask and we will throw it back to them. Like, where do people learn to do this? And we'll talk about sometimes it's a progression, you know, not necessarily cause and effect, but sometimes it's like we always say that's what's really important to learn to get your needs for power and control um, met in a healthy way. Yes. You know, what is what is it? You know, we want you to have control of your own life. We want you to be powerful people. But how do you do that in, in a healthy way where you're not trampling? other people and their own boundaries and needs for power and control. So um, we 
have um, plays for middle school and high school on those. Those plays um, always have a professional panel that, and I'm sure at some point when we're doing live panels, you'll be called upon <laughs> to you. participate on one of those. I would be honored. I would be honored. I know, I know that you would, I know you would help us. I would be um, honored. Where, um, you know, kids um, can openly or by index card write uh, a question and ask questions. And then we also do role plays with them as well, because often they are, it's like you said, they have never put themselves um, in their mind forward to a situation where, you know, maybe they're at a party and the person they're with all of a sudden starts having behaviors that they're not comfortable with or familiar with. And all of a sudden they're trying to drag them off to a room somewhere they're not comfortable they're not prepared they and so all of a sudden they're in a situation they're they're just not comfortable with yeah um and lots of times there's a lot of self-blaming so they don't report and so there's honestly once kids get information and they understand that things aren't healthy they're they're not right it's okay to report uh we get a lot of disclosures about fears for kids who are going to hurt themselves or sexual assault rape those kinds of things and um, it's really important for them to get support. Yes. Right. Yeah. And it's, and, it, and it's, it's like, okay. And, and a lot of kids also don't understand, um, it's okay. If you have a diagnosis or you're worried that you have a diagnosis of depression or anxiety, that those are medical illnesses. Mm -hmm. And it, and if you have a counselor, if you have medication, it's like, okay. I mean, you know, I mean, we don't want you to have that, but it, it's nothing to be ashamed of. Right. Like, it's like, I always say, it's like, if you have diabetes, it's, it's medical. Um, some people need a counselor. Some people need a special diet. Some people need a medication. It just all is an individual thing. It's okay. We would never shame anybody or blame anybody for those things. But, you know, sometimes they're also too worried about family members. Yes. Lots of times they're seeing these things in their homes. They don't know what to do. They don't know how. I mean, whether that be someone who's drinking and driving in a car, they're worried about them. Or a parent or grandparent who's being abused. Um, in some way. Absolutely. I just, I really appreciate, um, and I appreciate you, you, you know, talking about, absolutely. We love our LGBTQ plus community. We know that those individuals, um, you know, are, are very, very high at risk for bullying and, and suicide, unfortunately. And, um, and so our heart goes out and absolutely teaching dating respect in all kinds of relationships, because as you stated, it's a human, it's a human behavior. Um, and also sometimes, um, we, you know, maybe children have not had the best examples within their homes and things like that. Um, and so I just really appreciate respect shedding light, um, you know, on a very, very important topic um and also being open and honest about it because we need to talk about those big issues in order to heal as a community and as a society if i could say something else too i think you know that many people i i know i do when you're under a situation of stress it is like harder sometimes to hang on to your emotions and i think we've seen that i think that's what's happened somewhat um through the pandemic and what we've seen politically out through social media and, and the world. Um, and our kids are showing us some of that with regard to our kids um, as impacts identity-based bullying, kids who are simply different than they are, whether that be religion or race or, you know, it, and, you know, we say, you know, respect, it, it's not our job. It really is not. Um, sometimes it's disappointing to my actors, I know, to say that that this that that this group is like okay or they're the right way or you have to accept them. But you do have to be respectful. Yeah. Yeah. And you can't be mean. And and that is like my teaching thing as, as a teacher. It's like, no, you can't be mean. Mm -hmm. You know, and so if you go into a cafeteria and you're with somebody and you know they're gonna go make fun of that person who has they're they're from a group that's very diverse from yours and they have a they brought a lunch from home and you can't identify it and you're going to make fun of them or you know they're going to then you just have to chew. you don't have to like them you don't have to sit with them you don't have to understand them now you're going to miss out a lot i think yeah. you're not going to be able to learn a whole bunch you're going to miss out on a whole maybe new friend or a whole new food experience or whatever but you cannot it is not right to go over and be mean or cruel or unkind that is like that's not okay. And our job is to maybe then 
to you who might be doing that is to teach you how do you then manage yourself so you can behave in a in a respectful way to people that you don't get along with that you don't you know for whatever reason you just don't feel like you can expand <laughs> you know your horizons to um and and that's what we're having to do more of and we were starting to have to do more of that at the end of the year well i i don't have to like them i don't have to believe they're right no you don't and we can't make you and that's too big of a goal um but, but you do have to treat people with respect yes right yes which is and that's more than we've ever had we've seen a lot of that and i, I teachers say they have also yes no, respect is the key, and um, we're so very grateful, Dr. Newman, for the work that you're doing, um, and I think um, individuals in your position, you just keep fighting the good fight, and you are seeing, you are seeing um, results, maybe not immediately, but I promise you that every single seed that's planted um, is, is somewhere growing into a beautiful tree down the road. And so we thank you for planting those seeds of kindness in our young people because we know that the fruition of that, we'll, we'll see that um, we are seeing that. So um, with that, I want to just uh, give a plug to Dr. Newman. Um, thank you for being with us here today again on Education with an Edge. And um, we will continue to support you in any way that we that we possibly can. And thank you again. Um, I want to make sure that we get um, the respect website out to the viewers because I know that people are going to want to follow you and I don't want to inundate you with calls of course but I know that um, you're going to have an outpouring of support so um, the website is www.respecttoall.org um, and you can find out more about Dr. Patricia Newman and the amazing programs and resources that she has to offer for young people and um, we truly are just, I, I can't express enough gratitude and thank you for being with us here today, Dr. Newman. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. You're so very <laughs> welcome. You're so welcome. Um, and with that, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is Jaquel Lane and I am signing off here at Education with an Edge. Thank you for your continued uh, support of this platform. Please subscribe to Education with an Edge um, on your favorite podcast platform um, so that we can continue to bring hope and support to youth all around the world. Uh, we have a great partnership with Boys Town. There's the Boys Town Suicide Hotline. If you are um, having thoughts of suicide, um, please reach out to them. They have great resources. Um, continue, uh, continue to fight. Never give up. We need your light. We need your love. And with that, I'll sign off and have a great day. Thank you. If you have a question or just want to learn more, go to jaquellane.com. Thanks for listening to Education with an Edge. A Huda Media Production.